Welcome to the author's YouTube channel, Cursed Legends. Here you will dive into scary stories and creepy pasta about vampires, witches, and ghosts. Any feedback on the videos you watch is important to us. Have fun watching. Alexander intends to stop Bargden with the help of John. On the internet, the friends learn that the list of things that can be used to defeat a vampire, an aspen stake, garlic, a cross, and silver. John, I found the information. Vampires can be killed with an aspen stake, but we need to act fast. Alexander says as he walks into the reporter's room. He also reveals that the conversion of a victim into a vampire happens very quickly. John Scott's offers to call the police or show the local camera footage. Alexander rejects because he himself has already tried to do this unsuccessfully more than once. But he was only considered crazy. Damn it, we don't have time to call the police. Let's do something ourselves, Alexander insists clutching the list in his hands. I've tried, John. They need proof. We're going to have to handle this on our own, Alexander says. Alexander suggests hanging garlic he's collected on houses to scare the vampire away, and also suggests finding an aspen tree and carving a stake out of it to defeat the vampire Bogdan. By driving it through his heart, here is an axe and a cross. You must keep the cross in your hand at all times, it will scare Bogdan away. Go get an aspen tree, because the undertaker told me that there is an aspen grove near the village. Alexander says, handing John a tool. I hope this works. Hurry up, John. I'll meet you back here when you get back, Alexander says as he leads John toward the exit. And remember, you need to be back before sundown while the sun is still shining. John Scott goes to the Aspen Grove, taking with him an axe and a cross. On his way to the grove he hears a rustling in the bushes and stops. Who's there? Quests John, raising his hand with the cross. The rustling in the bushes stops, and a frightened John Scott continues to search the Aspen Grove. After a while, John finds the grove, but notices that someone has been following him all along the way. He thinks it can't be a vampire, because they don't walk in the sun. When he gets back to the village at night, John says out loud that he is going to Alexander's to grind an aspen steak. Who's that pacing behind me? John thought and stopped. Bogdan appeared out of nowhere behind him. An aspen steak, John. Funny choice. Have you decided to become a vampire hunter? Bogdan asks mockingly as he approaches. Oh my god. What the Bogdan? What are you doing here? John Scott exclaims, shifting his gaze to the vampire. John immediately points the cross at him, but the method is ineffective and he has to run away. But how do you run away from a vampire? Bogdan continues to laugh and says he's been a vampire too long to be scared of the cross. The cross? Yeah, John Scott, do you seriously believe that myth? Bogdan laughs, raising an eyebrow. Alexander arrives and throws a vial of holy water at the vampire, thus delaying Bogdan. That should hold him off. Let's get inside quickly, Alexander shouts, stepping back. The friends manage to run inside the house where Alexander lived. The room should be safe thanks to the garlic hanging everywhere. I hope this garlic works. John Scott mutters to himself as he looks at the garlic heads hanging around. Here, Alexander, maybe you can do something with this, John says, holding out an aspen steak. That sounds are heard. Turns out, all this time, Vampires were able to turn into them. The vampire bed sat on the roof and turned around Bogdan. Its footsteps were heard. Oh no, he's already on the roof, John Scott whispered, clutching the cross in his hand. We need a plan, John, and don't worry he won't get into the house. We can't handle him alone, Alexander said as he pondered his next move. An unexpected knock on the door startles Alexander and John. 
It turns out to be the bartender. Extremely unhappy that the writer has hung garlic at the entrance to his establishment. What the hell is garlic? Are you out of your mind? Shouts the bartender, pointing at the garlic. I'm sorry, but we have serious business here. It's the only way to protect ourselves from vampires, Alexander replies, stepping forward. Vampires, are you writing a movie script? I don't want to see you anywhere near my bar again, shouts the bartender, angrily, and leaves. Don suggests we take turns sleeping two hours at a time to get through the night. Alexander, let's do shifts. You rest first and I'll carve an aspen steak, John suggests, looking at a tense Alexander. On his shift, John will carve the aspen steak. In the morning the friends set out to hunt the vampire in his own house, taking with them a steak, a cross, holy water and some garlic. Ready, Alexander? It won't be easy, but we have no other choice, says John, preparing for the decisive fight with Bogdan. The village, surprisingly, turns out to be fairly deserted. Alexander's garlic was no longer hanging near the villagers' homes. Breaking into Bogdan's house, the friends immediately headed for the coffin. Inside there was no vampire. There lay an unknown skeleton. Damn it, where is he? John shouted indignantly, looking around. Maybe he knew we were coming, suggests Alexander, looking at the skeleton. Suspecting something wrong, Alexander and John immediately rushed to the basement where Adam was but find only a pool of blood. Bogdan seems to have known about our visit in advance. Maybe this is his trap, John Scott says, confused by the unexpected turn. We need help, Alexander. We can't handle this on our own and we need to get out of here now, John suggests. Glancing at a tense Alexander, he suggests asking for help from the locals despite their ridicule and distrust. Alexander agrees and they leave the vampire's house and head to the bar for help. We're going to have to try and explain this whole anomaly to them. Maybe someone will believe us, John says, sighing.